Marinero, the sick podcast, talking NFL today with your favorite NFL fantasy analyst. And he goes by Adam Rank on Twitter. You can follow him. But he also told me that Twitter is no longer his favorite uh, thing right now. It's actually TikTok. Is that true? That's affirmative. Yeah, I love the TikTok. It's a little bit more creative, a little bit more positive. As a matter of fact, somebody the other day was coming after me on TikTok. And I said, you know what? That negativity belongs on Twitter. TikTok is my it's my happy place now. I just want to make dumb videos and have a good time like all the other teenagers. So it's been enjoyable. I'm like the cool dad. Well, yeah, I'm the dad. I don't know if the cool dad applies, but I'm the dad out there. Yeah, I'm having a blast. I I tried it once. It just seems like way too much work for me. So I think I'm going to need a tutorial in that respect. Who knows? Maybe you could teach me one day. The sick podcast is brought to you by Essentia, the world's only natural memory foam mattress. Go to my slash sick pod. And use code SICKPOD for a free pillow with your purchase. Essentia Beyond Organic Sleep. Well, the New England Patriots probably thought that Cam Newton was sleeping uh, Mm -hmm. because uh, they've decided to go with Mac Jones and released Cam Newton. That's a couple of days removed now. How surprised were you or not? It was, I mean, when you hear that Cam Newton has been released, it is one of those things that just sounds shocking. You know, I live on the West Coast, so... My wife woke me up. She's like, Cam Newton was released. I don't know if you need to get up and do anything about that. I'm like, yeah, that it, it seems because it's such a huge name. That's such where you get your news. Your wife yeah, tips wife, you off on everything. All right. Okay, she's, I got the, uh, she's the news ticker. She's monitoring it. She's up with the kids. So I'm, you know, I have the late shift. She has the early shift. I, it, it was shocking. But the one thing that I really liked, I mean, you don't want to see somebody lose their job. But one of the things I really liked about it was for Mac Jones he now doesn't have to worry about looking over his shoulder anytime something goes wrong. Like any incomplete pass or a misread, he throws an interception. There's no camera cutaway to Cam Newton, you know, standing on the sidelines or anything like that. This is his team. He's going to be able to guide it. And I think a lot of people will be listening and be like, well, what about, what does this mean for my fantasy team? Now, a lot of you were not drafting Cam Newton. You shouldn't draft Mac Jones. But where it really helps out is for guys like Damian Harris, who... Last year did not get an, a lot of opportunity to run the football because Cam Newton was scoring all the touchdowns. Cam Newton scored 20 touchdowns last year. And anytime they got inside the five yard line and no team had, since 2018 has run the ball inside the five more than the New England Patriots, but it was all Cam last year. So now that's going to sprinkle out to Damian Harris. I think Stevenson will get some opportunities as well. And JJ Taylor is somebody to watch for super late in drafts. You're going to draft him in the 16th round or something. Don't draft him in the fourth or anything like that. But I think this New England backfield gets elevated a little bit. Johnu Smith should be elevated a little bit. If you miss out on one of the top three or four or even five, they'll throw in Mark Andrews. If you if you miss out on one of those tight ends, I think Johnu is somebody to look at towards the end of your draft as well. And it just feels like all the B players for the New England Patriots have now taken a slight step up. All right. Okay. If you want your uh, Mac Jones jersey, <laughs> sportbuffshop.com for all of your officially licensed sports apparel and more use code sick 15 for 15 percent off on all of their items and that's where you can pick it up all right okay bill belichick was asked how much COVID had to do with cam newton getting released and mac jones being a starting quarterback in terms of uh there appeared to be a misunderstanding with cam newton he was away on the COVID protocol list and all that stuff uh, he's not vaccinated. Um, Belichick wanted to dispel those 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 ideas and said that there's been more COVID cases with players that are as are vaccinated uh, more so than players that aren't, and this and that and whatever. But Adam, you have to think that when you're a coach, one of the things you really think about is availability. Yeah, am I going to be able to count on my players? Are they going to be there? Are they going to miss time? Whatever. We already know they're going to miss time eventually because of injuries. You'd have to think that it at least opened the door for Mac uh, for Mac Jones. You would have to uh, imagine. I mean, common sense would dictate that. I, I think that with a lot of these players, you know, who who understand that your best ability, as you said, is your availability. And if you're competing with other people for roster spots or playing time or anything like that, I would, I I, I can't imagine that you're not doing everything in your power to to remain on the field. And even just like as a general health issue like yeah just for this for the world to be able to move on from from what's been happening like this vaccine and and, you know it was approved by the fda and everything like that it's like i don't know and it 
there it just feels like there, it's just something that's hanging over you like there's something like is something going to happen i don't know it, it's kind of like when you're at sunday brunch and you know like well i gotta go to work tomorrow like that's always in the back of your mind and i think COVID's kind of like that too like is something going to happen like is there so I don't know. And I know that Bill Belichick was out there with his own theories and it's like, okay, that's very nice of you to talk about that. But it's like, I don't, I don't know. Like leave that stuff ahead by the, who was it too? Like, I, I don't, I think it was Cole Beasley where they were like, Hey, like he was wearing a mask and didn't catch COVID, but then was like, but the mask doesn't work. You're like, no, that actually proves that the mask was working. Cause you didn't get it because you were in close proximity to somebody, but because you were wearing, I, I don't know. I hear you. Yeah. There's just like, I don't know, like maybe not get your, like if you want to go to social media and get like a cool restaurant recommendation, I think that's perfect. So Medical before stuff, Mac Jones, before Mac Jones actually plays his first NFL regular season game here, I have to tell you that on the surface, he looks to be a better fit with Belichick because Belichick and the quarterback who does both, but probably likes to run a little bit more and maybe runs a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. It just... It, 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 listen, it didn't work out last year, and I'm going to preface what I'm saying by, you know, Mac Jones is not the next Tom Brady. Right. The man, he kind of plays like him. No, I mean, that's a great comparison, and I think, yeah. you know, and I say this as a Bears fan, going into that draft, I was kind of expecting the Bears to take a run at Mac Jones, assuming that Justin Fields was no longer going to be on the table, and we did extensive film breakdown, and I, everything about Mac Jones showed me that he's going to be a good player on the NFL level. And I think that he uh, he landed in one of the most ideal situations that not only do they have great coaching, and I think Josh McDaniels has proven in the past that he can work with these young quarterbacks. Remember, Josh McDaniels was in the forefront of a lot of this when he chose t uh, Tim Tebow years ago, you know, ushering in this this sort of new it, – it, nothing's really new. I mean, the NFL's had rushing quarterbacks forever, Randall Cunningham, uh -huh. Fran Tarkin, and you could go back in history – but I think that the Patriots just are a perfect situation where they can get the most out of Mac Jones. And he's been great at every level. He's shown that he's a good teammate. He's not one of these guys that, you know, he didn't he didn't transfer out of Alabama because there were other guys ahead of him. And he could have taken the easy way out and gone to like Texas Tech or somewhere like that, SMU, I don't know, and, and done it that way. But he stayed with the program, stuck with it. And I think that that's gonna. That's the kind of mentality that's gonna make him a successful NFL quarterback. All right, now on to Cam Newton. There's two teams that come to my mind for possible destinations, and I'm wondering if you and I are thinking the same thing. I probably should have wrote it down on a piece of paper so I could show you after you say it. But I'll be I'll be uh, honest with you and tell you who I'm thinking about. Who are you thinking about? It depends on if you're expecting him to be a starter or not a starter. I think Houston obviously has a need. That's one. <laughs> at the quarterback position. That's the only one I've been thinking of. I don't know, maybe Denver, but Denver just kind of, I don't know. I just think it would be a hodgepodge with too many different guys in there. They've already had a quarterback controversy, so to speak. I think that with Cam Newton, you want to find an offense that's kind of sim. Like, what does he do good with? Like, what is, where, where are his skills? You know, where would he help out a lot? And if, and if so Philadelphia, if Philadelphia hadn't already gotten Joe Flacco and Gardner Minshew, I thought that would have been good too. So I'm going to help you out on this one. You'll know exactly where I'm coming from. And we agree on Houston, by the way. I always look at familiarity. Mm -hmm. I always have a hard time saying that word. I'm glad I was able to pull it off. You did great. Um, who did he play for? Yeah, Washington. Correct. But Ron Rivera already came out and said that they're going to stick with Ryan Fitzmagic. And I think that yeah. Tyler Heineke is a player that they like as well. I think it's the backup that they really don't want to unseat. And I think that that when Cam Newton was kind of shot down for Washington, I didn't take that as a shot at Cam Newton. I didn't think that that was indicative of what he's available or what he's able to do. I actually just took it as a positive for Heineke that perhaps he is somebody that they're looking at long term. I know there was uh, the playoff run last year. I know there was a uh, uh, Chase was was sitting there on the sideline during a mic'd up sex session. He didn't even know the quarterback's name. He's like, number four is pretty good. I kind of like him. Uh, but I think that he, they do see something in him. And again, it would really hurt his development to bring in Cam Newton. And then obviously Fitzmagic's going to have his games where he throws four picks. Why would you want to do that to yourself? So I like it. I, yeah. I, I'm not opposed to it. But, um, I, but because Ron Rivera already shot it down, it was kind of out of my mind. All right, so you know what? To Cam Newton, um, here's to you, Cherry River Heart Seltzer. 
only 90 calories, natural flavors, no preservatives now available in Quebec grocery stores and the beer store, hoping you catch on with a team. But is it safe to say then that he doesn't start the NFL season, which starts, of course, on uh, Thursday, the um, the uh, what is it? The 9th of the September, 9th. Or whatever the day is. OK, Thursday, the 9th of September. And that at some point, a quarterback's going to get injured. We know that they get hurt. And when they do, that's likely going to be where he's going to end up. Is that going to be it? Hundred percent. That uh, there's no there's no need to rush into a position right now because all the jobs are basically full. You know, you're not going to walk in any place and be a starting quarterback. But if there is a team and Team X has a guy and they don't have a a great backup and there's a situation where a quarterback goes down, I think it was a couple of years ago where Sam Bradford, yeah, was traded to the Eagles. You know, it, it just you know something like that happens. Heaven forbid we don't want it to happen, but there is going to be a quarterback shortage at some point, and the first call is going to be to Cam Newton. You are known as the NFL fantasy analyst, expert, aficionado, the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. We're going to talk fantasy in just a second. Fantasy Ranks with Adam Rank. Okay, so let's get to it now. Uh, who are you starting? Who are you sitting week one? What should people be looking at? Well, I mean, obviously, the players that you drafted – we're very high on coming into the season. Those are the players that you should be rolling with. I think um, some of the teams that are some of the players who have great matchups, though, and this is more for DFS or anything like that. I'm, I've taken a look at Sam Darnold, and two of his first three games are very favorable. He's got his former team, the Jets, in a revenge game. Uh, in week one of the Jets, so that allowed you the just know most- he's going to explode. You just know yeah. it. You see it coming. And he's, you know, he, the Jets allowed the third most fantasy points to quarterbacks this season. I don't think they made any sort of significant upgrade to that secondary. And even if you're not going to start Sam Darnold, what I do believe that means is that players like Christian McCaffrey, who you're starting anyways, but Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore become excellent starts. I'm really interested to see if, if Dan Arnold becomes a thing for them, because not only do they have the Jets in week one, they have the Houston Texans in week three. So you should be you know, if you're if you're streaming tight ends or you're you're at a deficit at the tight end position and you have an opportunity to add yeah. somebody, even if you're not starting Dan Arnold, I would pick him up that first week just to see the target share, to see what happens because there's going to be some opportunity, especially early on in the season. The the Panthers also play the Falcons twice. You know, so there's going to be chances for guys like Dan Arnold to step forward and really make an impact. There are reports that Saquon Bartley, uh, Barkley is, is actually leaning towards playing in week one. How do you handle those situations, players that suffer, players that suffer significant injuries? Uh, do you start them right away? Yeah, it, it feels funny because everybody has drafted Christian McCaffrey 1.01 with no hesitation. He played three games last year, but nobody cares. They're like, yeah, whatever, he's out there, he's fine. It's not a big deal. Like he had shoulder injuries. He had ankle injuries. And obviously it's not like tearing your ACL and all that stuff that Saquon Barkley went through. But that happened very early in the year for Saquon Barkley. So I'm not really too apprehensive about starting him. Again, you drafted him in the first round. At the at the worst, you got him in the second. I don't I I, I can't imagine your lineup. DFS, different story. But I can't imagine your traditional fantasy league of you having multiple running backs. Uh that are so good that you're not going to be able to start Saquon Barkley. Like, yes, you're going to put him out on the field. Obviously, the offensive line for the New York Giants is going to be a huge issue this season. Saquon Barkley is the the caliber of player who can overcome that. Like, he can make things happen. He's a dynamic player. So I have no hesitation. If Saquon Barkley is suiting up for the New York Giants, I'm putting him in my lineup. I'm in Montreal, and uh, not only here, but obviously all over North America, maybe even all over around the world. Uh, everyone already started their fantasies and had them uh, last week, maybe even this week, and maybe even over the next couple of days. You can call Sophistication Event Rentals and have a big party with live music, DJ sound systems, tents, chairs, tables, decor, lighting, photo booth, TV screens here in Montreal, your one-stop shop, 514-570-5770 to go along your fantasy pool. All right. Speaking of fantasy and speaking of your favorite team, I'm looking at your cap, Chicago Bears. Uh, The Bears say it's no need to rush Justin Fields. Agree or disagree, and does he end up being the number one guy um, by midseason or at least by the end of the season? Yeah, I think for a lot of Bears fans, they're 
we want him to start week one because we've been waiting for this for so long. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not my dad's age. I don't remember Bobby Douglas or any of these other guys who are amazing Bears quarterbacks. In my lifetime, the best Bears quarterbacks have been, I sort of remember Jim McMahon, Jay Cutler, and Walter Payton throwing the halfback option. And that's it. That, that, that's it. That's, that's the end of the list. So I think that we as fans want to see Justin Fields out there ripping it up. We know what he can do. We saw him, you know, play well at a high level at Ohio State. We want to see this happen in the NFL. Matt Nagy, however, comes from the Andy Reid coaching tree where they don't really turn to rookie quarterbacks. Donovan McNabb had to wait a little bit. Patrick Mahomes famously waited almost a full season behind Alex Smith before he started week 17 and was given the job the following year. I don't believe that Andy Dalton is that kind of quarterback who should be keeping somebody on the bench. If Andy Dalton had been here for a number of years, like if Jay Cutler was still playing in the NFL and was still the Bears quarterback, and you're like, all right, let's give Jay another chance. Uh, the, you know, he he's still a good quarterback. Yeah. So that would make that would make some sense. But I think that we're kind of like a kid who's been waiting all year for a bicycle. It's Christmas or Boxing Day, I don't know. Um, you get a bicycle. And your parents are like, you're like so excited. And your parents are like, no, you get to go out in July. And you, you don't want to wait. You want to go out that morning and you want to see it happen. Yeah. So I think that's the thing that we want to see. And I don't, and I don't, I don't sus- subscribe to this theory. Cause like you hear a lot of people like, well, we don't want him to get hurt with Andy Dalton out there. Like, or with Aaron Donald, I should say like, that's garbage. Like every team has good players. And last year Tua Tonga Vailoa played his very first game of his career against yeah. Aaron Donald and the Rams and they won. So it's like I'm not I'm not hearing that. I think though the most uh not logical but the most similar. It reminds me of when Deshaun Watson in his first season with the Houston Texans, they started Tom Savage week 1. Yeah. Tom Savage played a half, Deshaun Watson came in. I think that's a very realistic possibility for the Bears here. On Tua, why is the Dolphins coach always asked if Tua is going to start? I don't know. Like I, he's asked that every day. Like what? Who's starting? Who's 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 gonna be, who's gonna take over for him? I don't I don't get it. Yeah. Last year I thought Flores uh, was doing a, a good job because you're you're putting Tua out there. Yeah. And if you're a team that's not competing for a playoff spot, then I understand. Like, hey, let them let them figure it out. The Dolphins won ten games last year. We're competing for the playoffs. They needed to win games. Ryan Fitzpatrick gave them that opportunity. The whole point of trading away or letting Ryan Fitzpatrick walk away is that Tua is going to be your quarterback. And I think that they did a great job of surrounding him with a lot of talent. They brought in Will Fuller, who's a dynamic playmaker. Jalen Waddell, say, same thing. Let him go out there and do his thing. He, he, he was coming off a major hip injury, coming into a rookie season where he had to deal with the limitations of COVID. Yeah. Let's let Tua go out there and see what he can do. I can't wait to see the uh, AFC East. Allen, Tua, Jones, Wilson. Uh, You know, four young quarterbacks. Allen's obviously been in the league for a couple of years. He has some experience. He's already proven that he can get the job done. Uh, He's the number one because of that proven track record. But my question to you is, a couple of years from now, Mm -hmm. will Allen still be the number one quarterback in that division? That's going to be close because I really love Zach Wilson. And I think that he brings a a lot of poise to the position. I saw that during the preseason. That was one of the biggest questions I had for him because obviously BYU was playing a lesser schedule. And I was a little concerned, like, how is he going to handle this? Like, you're going to New York. You're going to be playing in a major media market. You didn't play at a big time power five conference team. How is this going to look? So far, it's been fantastic. And I look at him having a lot of ability. I think the Jets are on the right path. I'm not sure that it's going to happen for them this year, but I think that of the rookie quarterbacks, the guy that I could see having that Justin Herbert-like season could be Zach Wilson because he's going to play for the whole year. They don't have a veteran behind him. He's not going to get to it out of the game. The, the Jets aren't going to be that competitive. I don't think they're going to be pushing for the playoffs, even with the added team. And I think they're just going to let him go out there and play. And they've got good weapons around him. I think Corey Davis is fantastic. I really do. Uh, I really do like Elijah Moore as well, and he's been battling some injuries so far. I think by the end of the season, we're going to see him step forward. And so, for me, I think Zach Wilson. I'm not going to say it's not going to be Josh Allen, but I think that there's going to be a huge push with Zach Wilson and Mac Jones, who we talked about earlier. 
I'm a, as a Jess fan, I hope you're right. But after everything that's happened over the last 20 years, there was uh, seven or eight years or so where they were okay. But for the most part, you know yeah. that more often than not, they get it wrong. And watch Mac Jones end, end up being absolutely unbelievable <laughs> under Belichick in New England. All that said, uh, enjoy your fantasy. Football is almost here, bud. The regular season is just one week away. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Cheers. it. Cheers. Now my time to try and make a little money. It's time for Sick Picks, brought to you by my bookie. How you doing, bud? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm excited. One week away. You're going to make me some cash or what? Yeah, and I got a pick. I think you're going to like it a lot. All right. Tell me his handles. I run my bets. He's my buddy Cash. I'm asking him to help make me some cash. Make me some cash, bud. Let's go. Okay. My first pick, before, before, any, before I get into anything, guys, my first pick, my bookie has a free bet. You got to take it. It's free money. Literally minus one ten odds. The bet asks, will any team score in the in the season opener? Bucks, Cowboys. Yes, obviously, guys. Minus one ten. Go make your free bet on my bookie. Get your free money now for my play, guys. I'm going to be giving it to you guys Sunday, September twelfth, one o'clock. Jets, Panthers. Jets plus five. Why are the Jets plus five? Why are they five point underdogs to the Panthers, guys? I'm going to be honest. I think the bookies are drinking a little too much Cherry River. Cherry River. The Jets plus five. Why are they five point underdogs? Yes, I understand Carolina's at home, but here's the thing, guys. I literally only have them about one and a half, two point favorite on a neutral field. I don't think the Panthers' home field advantage is three and a half points. You're getting through the three, you're getting through the key number four also. Give me the Jets plus five. We're not betting against the Jets with Sam Darnold anymore. We're betting against Zach Wilson. I think this guy's the real deal. Expect a show from him this season. Give me the Jets plus five. I think well, it's a good bet. The spread is what it is because the bookies, I guess, are expecting Sam Darnold to uh, a little payback on the New York Jets. You can go to uh, mybookie and mybookie.ag slash the sick podcast. Use code sick picks for 50% deposit bonus. Bet, win, get paid. And you cash tell me that if we want to get paid, we go with the Jets plus five. Jets plus five week one, guys. That's your pick right here on the sick podcast. Cheers.